Hello, I'm Stephen Fields, and I'm the Communications Coordinator with the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. Uh, as you know, summer is a time for many people in the education sector to do some traveling, and at least one person in our Catholic School Board community had an especially faith-filled summer experience. Rebecca Daoud is the campus minister at F.J. Brennan Catholic High School, and last week she attended World Youth Day in Lisbon, Portugal. Now, if you're not familiar with it, World Youth Day is a recurring Catholic festival uh, referred to some, uh, referred by some, I should say, as the Catholic Woodstock, uh, with millions of young Catholics from around the world gathering together to celebrate their faith. So I'm joined today by Rebecca now to talk about her experience. Welcome, Rebecca. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to share this experience with everyone. Great. So uh, I think you just got back. I'm, I'm guessing you're probably pretty exhausted right about now. Yeah, I mean, it's all good, though. It's it's good. It was such a beautiful experience, and I'm so excited to share it that it doesn't matter. <laughs> so was this your first time uh, uh, taking part in something like this? The first time taking part in a pilgrimage that was to this degree, like it was huge. We were, there was an influx in the city of like 2 million people approximately. So in Lisbon. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it was. And I understand that this was, uh, this was, the last one was, I think in 2019 in Panama City. They had to obviously delay it because of the pandemic. So uh -huh. it, it must have been, um, I'm guessing probably a little extra added excitement because this was the first one since, since COVID. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone was super excited. You could tell that some people, um, like this was one of their first experiences traveling ever because of the pandemic, because it's geared towards young people. Um, mm -hmm. And if they haven't had the chance to leave home yet, this was one of the first from all over the world. So right. it was very, right. very cool. <laughs> so I understand that there was a, um, a, a delegation that traveled from the Diocese of London, which obviously we're mm -hmm. part of. Um, and um, were, were there any other people here from within our own school board community that also traveled with you to attend this event? Yeah. So I just want to clarify, there's there's actually two groups under the London okay. Diocese that went. There was um, one group from Leamington, uh, led by Father Tom at St. Michael's Parish. He took a bunch of young people and three people from the Diocese of London. And then there was another group that was sponsored by St. Vincent de Paul um, Youth Council uh, uh, in Windsor that actually um, took myself and uh, another staff member from St. John de Brebeuf, uh, uh, a um, NEA, Will Waddell, and then also one of the graduating students from Brennan High School who graduated this year. Uh, okay. So she also came with us, Davina Sinjakli. There were also other people sponsored by St. Vincent de Paul. We were total seven people. Okay. So mm -hmm. so when did you leave and, and when did you get back? Uh, we left um, July 27th and we got back August 9th, early in the morning, <laughs> around 1 a.m. Okay. <laughs> so I, you had a little bit of uh, time to kind of familiar, familiar, familiarize yourself with the, the, the area and everything before the before the event actually started? Yeah. So because we were sponsored by St. Vincent de Paul, um, we actually attended their St. Vincent de Paul International Conference in Felgaris first. Well, sorry, we landed in Porto first uh, and then we spent a day there. Then we rode out to Felgaris, spent three days there then went to Lisbon and spent about a week. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, just uh, tell me about the event. Um, I, you know, I had to be with that many people there. Was it was it spread out over multiple locations? What were some of the, the different events yeah. that you attended? Like, can you give me mm -hmm. some details about that? Yeah, so just a brief summary of, of everything. Um, World Youth Day, the, you know, the biggest part of the World Youth Day is um, the Saturday night vigil into the Sunday, but it actually begins the Monday before. Um, and every day there is a rise up meeting where there's um, a speaker or a priest um, who talks to youth. They'll have these meetings at various different churches throughout Lisbon um, and they'll specify it uh, 
for a specific language. So all the English speaking people go to the English speaking rise up meetings, all of the Spanish people, Spanish speaking people would go to the Spanish rise up meetings, etc. cetera. Um, so we would attend one of those or attempt to <laughs> because uh, travel was so difficult some days. Um, and then afterwards there would be mass in the morning. And then in the evenings, there would be various different events happening or not evenings, even afternoons. Um, there was, for example, uh, the youth festivals. So that was kind of the Woodstock um, for Catholics. That that's the that's what they're referring to was the youth festival. Mm -hmm. It's right on the water. Um, oh, like you could see the ocean behind you, and there's just like music blaring and people just having a great time. Um, there was also the city of Joy, an area in the middle of Lisbon. A uh, big, huge park that they closed off and they had confessions with literally hundreds of priests and these um, carved out or these constructed little domes that look kind of like this or like they kind of look like homes where the priest would sit here and the person saying the confession would sit there and there were just rows of them. Um, there is also like in the city of joy, these little booths that people could walk through to talk to different um, congregations and orders, sisters, nuns, brothers, uh, and see what works of charity they do. And, uh, you know, if people are intrigued, they can ask more questions about how to enter into those orders, you know, how to, what vocations are like, all of that stuff. Um, and then, you know, the main events with the Pope. Uh, there was the opening mass on the Monday, on uh, Monday evening. He wasn't there. The Pope hadn't arrived yet, but um, the Archbishop of Lisbon um, celebrated that mass. And then on Tuesday, there was um, a meeting in the park in one of a different park where the Pope uh, addressed all of the youths and welcomed them and, and really relayed the message that all youths, no matter their background, no matter what they're going through or their, their ethnicity or their culture, everyone is welcome in the church. And so it was really reassuring hearing that message. Um, and then the following, the Wednesday, or sorry, on the Friday, they had done the Stations of the Cross. Um, and so that was also with 1.5 million people to, in attendance. And it was, yeah, very cool to see all of these people from all over the world join together and pray the seasons of the cross with the Pope. And then on Saturday, we headed out to, um, I would want to say the East end of Lisbon, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm not very good with maps, but it's like right along the water. And we did a pilgrimage with about 1.5 million people. We walked for about two hours um, to our location and we slept under the stars. It was insane. Wow. And then uh, they did a prayer vigil throughout the night they had adoration um and obviously we couldn't see the pope because our section was way too far but we had a screen and um that's how they actually separated it all is through screens people could still participate virtually or via the screen and then um in the morning the pope celebrated mass with everyone in attendance and it was an incredible experience <laughs> yeah so I, I did a little bit of reading about that and I thought, wow, you know, like we, uh, prior to the pandemic, our, our board, we, you know, we, we would do our Together in Faith celebration at the beginning of, of the year uh, in, in September and we'd have it in a hockey arena and there's about, you know, 2,000 staff members who would all yep. attend it. And that's a pretty mammoth undertaking to organize a mass in a hockey arena for, for 2,000 people. I can't imagine what sort of attention to detail and the, and the level of planning and organization must have gone into to doing a mass for 1.5 million people. Uh, oh, I was floored at how well organized it was, honestly. Like, I mean, obviously there was its, you know, blips and glitches. And I mean, that's bound to happen when you have 1.5 million people, but we got our food for the day and a half that we were there. We got our location where we were gonna sleep. Um, we managed to all stay together. Like it was incredible, honestly. You could definitely see the hand of the Holy Spirit making that work because wow. it's a huge event. Mm -hmm. So, what was the you know what was the, uh, Pope obviously did during Mass? I'm assuming did a homily. What was what, what was his message? What what did he tell people? He definitely told people that. Well, I want to say first of all that the theme of the whole World Youth Day was. Mary went up uh, and left with haste towards Elizabeth. Um, and so the main message of 
the entire event from what I took from it is that Pope Francis was telling us that we have to use our joy, the joy that the same joy that propelled Mary to go visit her cousin um, and to serve her. We have to also use that joy to serve others um, and to, you know, help um, them through our charity, help them through the love that we have for Christ and then also project that onto our, our neighbors, our friends. Um, so he was, that was one of the core messages. Another one was that, like I said earlier, everyone is invited to the church. Like we have to erase the idea that there are boundaries that exist. There's you and me, like, no, that doesn't exist. We are all one church. Um, so that was another message. And yeah, so that's what I took out of it most. And, and also the final mass, um, he spoke mostly a, a lot about the transfiguration, how, um, cause it was actually the Sunday of the transfiguration, the feast day, um, where, um, Jesus went up with two of the disciples and he revealed his glory, um, and how his face shone, sh shined and like was bright. Right. And so mm -hmm. he was saying that we are all we all have that in us. We all have that brightness in us that we are to bring to other people to show them the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, it, it tells just a little bit your role as, as campus minister there at, at Brennan. And, and, and how, did, how did this experience change the way you will fulfill your, that, that role as, as a campus yeah. minister? Well, my role as campus minister is to serve the students and serve, serve the staff in all purposes of, of the faith, all, all aspects of the faith. Um, mainly for the students, it's to support them, to, to help them um, develop a relationship with Jesus Christ and to bridge that gap between the faith that they have and, and their education. Um, and, and also just to to be a, a presence of hospitality and accompaniment for the students, regardless of their faith and their background. Um, and then for the staff, it's the same thing, to support them through their, their daily struggles or through the big events that happen in their life. Um, and the biggest thing that I got out of this is like, like we were talking about, when you see 1.5 million people from around the world, different groups, young, old, didn't matter, everyone was there and I, we were walking pretty fast when we were walking towards the vigil site on that Saturday evening. Um, and I remember passing by groups of people, groups, some groups from were from Honduras and they were all singing together, singing in their native language, um, you know, playing the drums, another group uh, doing another sort of chant, another dance, uh, people wearing their ethnic, their cultural dress. And it was so beautiful having everyone come together and, um, it really opened my eyes to the diversity that we have at Brennan um, among the students and the staff. And it has, you know, inspired me to to investigate a bit further, um, you know, the, the cultural and faith traditions of the students and the staff and see how we can incorporate that somehow into our masses, our praise and worship celebrations, um, our, our various activities that we do throughout the year to help engage the students and make them feel at home. Um, I think that's really uh, something that I, I would like to try to do for our students, because I do know that there are a lot of immigrants, first or second generation Canadians at our school, and, and they do hold tight to those traditions. I know I do. I'm, I'm also a, a first generation Canadian. So I, I think that the students would appreciate that. And yeah. It, it occurs to me that, uh, you know, a, a big festival like this, you know, with it, with its focus on young people might um, help to sort of dispel some, some notions, uh, maybe some misconceptions that, that, that people have about the Catholic Church being this, you know, kind of thing for stuffy old people, right? <laughs> it, yeah. it, it looked like this was like a lot of fun, you know, that there was a real emphasis on that. And it looked like it was inspiring and kind of invigorating for young people. Um, you know, do you think that that's when you consider, um, you know, let's face it, with, with church attendance, you know, what we're seeing perhaps locally that, you know, some churches have had to consolidate and that kind of thing. And do, like, do, do you think that, that by having been at something like this, that maybe you can bring some of that, um, that that enthusiasm about about faith about about the Catholic faith to the to the people that you serve and maybe that in in turn will will get some more young people kind of engaged with with being involved in their in their church communities a little bit more. 
Yeah, of course. Um, I think that young people, they want to be involved. And I think a lot of times, I mean, even from just working one year at Brennan, I've noticed this, that young people want to be involved, but sometimes they just don't have the resources or the skills. They don't know the right words to say or how to express them to relay this information. Um, and so I'm at, this experience has shown me that um, instead of having the kids come to me with their requests, uh, it might be um, a good idea to offer them a prompt. You know what I mean? Like, hey, do you want to get more involved with St. Vincent de Paul? Um, there is different, you know, uh, activities going on throughout Windsor where they're serving the homeless. Um, they're they're cooking up soup dinners. They're, you know, um, getting involved with various activities of uh, handing out um clothing and stuff like that. So there's different activities that are happening. And through this experience, through going with St. Vincent de Paul, I've learned a lot. And then also uh, through different, um, uh, of through those, uh, the, the city of joy, I was talking about how we had met all of the different congregations and um, groups that are doing works of service and mercy. It, it really opened my mind to different activities that we can do. Um, that we can bring to the students so that they can get more involved and, and see um, how they can put their faith in action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that social justice component. Yeah. Um, connecting that with with faith is, is such an important part of engaging young people, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And and I know that um, it's, well, that's not the end all be all of our faith, right? Um, service is one way to delve, deep, delve deeper and to develop that relationship with our Lord. But it is one of the first steps that students can take. And then from there, we can um, help them develop a closer relationship with our Lord and just fall in love with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where and when is the next uh, World Youth Day? And, and do you plan on going to that? Are you thinking that far ahead yet? <laughs> the next World Youth Day is in 2027, and um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Seoul, Seoul in South Seoul. Korea. Seoul yep. in South Korea. Yep. Um, so they would have done it in two years from now in 2025, but instead they're actually going to host an event in Rome for youth in 2025. So okay. it's not going to be a World Youth Day in Rome, but it will be an event, and then in Seoul in 2027. Um, I don't know if the opportunity arises, why not? I would love to take this time. Like I took one student. Um, I think I will have like a little bit more travel experience by then. And now that I've done it once, I, I would hope I would love to take more students um, the next time around. So, yeah, God willing, it'll happen. <laughs> Sure. Listen, Rebecca, I really enjoyed taking the time uh, uh, to, to appreciate you taking the time to, to be with us here. It was an enjoyable conversation. I'm glad you uh, enjoyed it. And I, I hope it uh, has the desired effect in your school community. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Okay. Take care. Okay. God bless. Bye.